Greetings, this is Brother Eli with another episode of Bible Truth Revealed. Today's teaching is entitled, Should Israelites Keep Dogs? That is, should Israelites keep dogs? Many people have died, are dying, or will die because they unknowingly have an instrument of death living inside their home. The oppressor has deceived the world into believing that a creature which the Most High regards as an abomination is actually man's best friend. In this teaching, I will clearly explain why dogs must not live inside the homes of the holy people of the Most High. On the other hand, the oppressor considers dogs to be part of the family, and they even go as far as to claim that their dogs will go to heaven. Pope Francis says there is a place for pets in paradise, the Pope said during an appearance in St. Peter's Square that dogs, along with all of God's creatures, can go to heaven. The children of Israel have adopted too many of the disgusting practices of the oppressor. Having dogs inside the house is one of these abominable practices that must stop when we learn the truth about the oppressor's furry friends. Whilst there are examples of dog ownership in the Bible, there are no instances of dogs living inside the home. Dogs living inside the home is a disgusting heathen custom. Dogs can serve us well, but their place is outside the home. To put it simply, if you do not have the space outside your house to put a house for your dog, that is, a dog house or kennel, it means you should not have a dog. It's that simple. The simple fact is that in biblical times, dogs worked outside the home. They did not live inside the home. We can find example of a working dog in Job chapter 30 verse 1. Job chapter 30 verse 1 in the Brenton Septuagint translation reads thus. But now the youngest have laughed me to scorn. Now they reprove me in their turn, whose fathers I set at naught, whom I did not deem worthy to be with my shepherd dogs. So Job had shepherd dogs. Shepherd dogs, they outside with the sheep. They did not live inside his house. When we were in the Holy Land, it was obvious to everyone that dogs belonged outside the house. Nevertheless, in the lands of our captivity, our slave masters, being as vile and repulsive as they are, not only allow their dogs to live inside their homes, but they let them eat from their tables and sleep in their beds. 19-year-old Leah loves her three dogs. They go everywhere with her. Do they sleep with you here? Yeah, almost every night. That's right. After a day of playing in the backyard and strolling the neighborhood, dirty paws and all, Play, guys. they all wind up back on the bed with Leah. What do you think's on their paws? Uh, it's a little scary to think about. I don't really know. <laughs> we decided to find out. You ready to get swabbed, Kevin? Here we go. What have your paws been into, sweetie? We swabbed all their paws and sent the samples off to a lab. Dirty dog paw results are in. Time to reveal the details. Kevin, your retriever, has 10 different types of bacteria okay. and two types of fungus. Sashi, your poodle, has six different types of bacteria and one fungus. And Charlie, the poodle, eight types of bacteria and one fungus. And guess what? All of your dogs had E. coli. <laughs> oh my God, they slept next to me last night, so that's good to hear. It's disgusting. <laughs> this teaching will be divided into two parts. Part one, dogs are abominable creatures. 
And part two, dogs are instruments of death. Part one, dogs are abominable creatures. Deuteronomy chapter 23 verse 19 in the Brenton Septuagint translation is verse 18 in the KJV. I will read Deuteronomy chapter 23 verse 19 in the Brenton Septuagint translation. It says, Thou shalt not bring the hire of a harlot, nor the price of a dog, a dog, a dog, into the house of the Lord thy God. For any vow, because even both, that means the harlot and the dog, are an abomination to the Lord thy God. Overly zealous dog lovers will claim that this verse is not really about dogs. It says dogs, but it doesn't really mean dogs. It means male prostitutes. So let me give you another scripture that proves that dogs are abominable. Proverbs chapter 26 verse 11. Proverbs chapter 26 verse 11 says, As when a dog, a dog, a dog goes to his own vomit, yuck, and becomes abominable. Dogs eat their own vomit. They are an abomination. It continues, so is a fool who returns in his wickedness to his own sin. Both harlots, also known as whores or prostitutes, and dogs, also known as moths and mongrels, are an abomination to the Most High. Just like swine, dogs are abominable scavengers that eat poop and vomit. In the Encyclopedia Britannica, under the heading, Why do dogs eat poop? It says this. The poop is certainly not a staple food for any human. Duh. It may come as no surprise that poop is a common part of many a dog's diet. Poop is a common part of many a dog's diet. Only abominable creatures eat poop and then abominable people let them lick their faces with their stinking mouth. She does love kisses. She, like, loves licking me everywhere. It drives my husband nuts, but I like to let her express herself. She kisses everyone, and we actually train her how to kiss, so on command, Misa. Chew, chew, please. Oh, thank you. Lucy likes to chew on toys. She loves to give kisses, like big, wet kisses. It's sort of like a storm of kisses. It would never occur to our forefathers, the Israelites, to let an abominable creature lick their faces. But this is a common practice among the heathen. The children of Israel are called to be a holy people. We are not supposed to be like the heathen. There is nothing holy about letting a nasty dog lick your face after eating poop or licking its own bottom. Yet, that's the weird thing that the heathen do. But don't take my word for it. I see her like her butthole. <laughs> That's the weird thing we do. The oppressor thinks that it is perfectly fine to lick their dog's mouth. People don't get sick from licking dog's mouths, do they? There is nothing we can say to the oppressor to convince them that it is not okay to lick their dog's mouth. There's nothing you could tell me that would make me not want Lucy to give me kisses. I mean, Lucy has straight up licked her butt and then kissed me and it's fine. This is why this teaching, like all my teachings, is directed at the children of Israel. We are the holy people of the Most High. And we must be holy as He 
is holy. This includes not having unclean animals inside our homes and not allowing abominable creatures to lick our faces. At this point, someone will say, Well, I don't let my dog lick my face, so I'm okay. Wrong again. Dogs have all kinds of parasites that are harmful to people. They don't even have to lick your face to pass these parasites to you. What else should we expect from an abominable beast? So I'm Dr. Jody Poller. Nice, nice to, to meet, meet you. you. So I heard she really likes to give kisses, huh? She does. So did you know you could possibly get parasites from her giving kisses? Oh, isn't that fun? Yeah. If your dog, let's say, is eating her own feces, and then oh. she decides to go kiss you, oh god, parasites. Specifically, there's you know giardia. She got giardia a bunch because we live in the city. Right. She got it like three times. It's so common. It's diarrhea. Get projected to the wall. Yeah. To be perfectly clear. The lick of this filthy creature is not only a problem if it touches your face. We shouldn't let dogs lick us at all. Now let's consider the worst case scenario. What's the worst that could happen? Just one month ago, Greg Manteifel was a long way from a hospital bed. He loves riding his Harley. Dawn Manteifel says her husband was perfectly healthy, but what they initially thought was the flu landed Greg in the emergency room. It hit him with a vengeance. It's just bruising all over him, like somebody beat him up with a baseball bat. She says life as they knew it changed forever. Blood tests revealed an infection caused by the bacteria, capnocytophaga. It took a week and they were taking his legs. The infection very likely entering Greg's system by something so common, getting licked by a dog, probably his own. This type of bacteria comes from the saliva of dogs. Righteous Israelites must not follow the abominable practices of the heathen. Unclean animals such as dogs, cats, snakes, guinea pigs and so forth belong outside the home. Yet the oppressor has taught us to view unclean beasts as pets. In the Encyclopedia Britannica, under the heading dog and subheading dogs as pets, quote one says this, the companionship between humans and dogs is not a new phenomenon. However, in modern society, most dogs are owned as pets, not because of the work they were bred to do. Again, in modern society, most dogs are owned as pets, not because of the work they were bred to do. So there was a time when dogs were used for work, just like Job used dogs to look after his sheep. That's perfectly fine. But in modern society, most dogs are owned as pets. That is not a Hebrew custom. Israelites are not supposed to have dogs inside our homes as pets. The dog is supposed to serve us if we have it. And it must live outside the house in its own house. The quote continues. Many breeds, such as the toy dogs, were developed precisely to be pets. The oppressor has developed or engineered or created, made dogs precisely to be pets. For the purpose of being pets, that does not come from the Most High. Modern dogs were developed by mixing dogs with other creatures such as wolves and also by mixing different types of dogs together. They were literally made to order. Dogs are bred to have different sizes, characteristics and personalities. This is also not a Hebrew custom. So if you are an Israelite that is breeding dogs, you must repent. In fact, the Most High 
hates mixing. We can find this in Leviticus chapter 19, verse 19. Leviticus chapter 19, verse 19 says, Ye shall observe my law. Thou shalt not let thy cattle gender, that means mix, with one of another kind. And thou shalt not sow thy vineyard with diverse seed. And thou shalt not put upon thyself a mingled garment woven of two materials, even our clothing are not allowed to be mixed with different material. So again, ye shall observe my law. This is not a suggestion. It is a law. If we claim to keep the Torah, the law of the Most High, he says, ye shall observe my law. And his law is that we must not mix our animals together. The oppressor hates the laws of the Most High. So he took the dog, which is already an abominable creature, and repeatedly mixed it to form super abominable creatures. Then ignorant Israelites take these super abominations into their homes and treat them like members of the family. The time has come to repent. The simple fact is that most dog breeds today were not created by the Most High. They were created by the oppressor by mixing different creatures together. That is why they are constantly in and out of the vet with all sorts of health problems and genetic defects. The modern British Bulldog which struggles to walk, which struggles to mate, is not in any way able to fulfil its original function. I had 30 minutes to make a decision to let my dog live or to put my dog to sleep. You speak to any French Bulldog owner and most of them have some kind of issue. In the Encyclopedia Britannica, under the same heading, Dog, Quote 2 says, as a result of millennia, that means thousands of years, of selective breeding, that means mixing, the same thing the Most High said not to do, as a result of millennia of selective breeding, the dog has been adapted to live with people. If the dog had to be adapted to live with people, that means it's not in the dog's nature to do so. It had to be developed. It had to be changed. It had to be adapted to do something contrary to its nature. It had to be adapted to live with people. The quote continues. Seminal studies of dog behavior conducted in the 1950s and 60s showed, however, that dogs raised without human contact at an early age retain, that means keep, their inherent instincts and prefer relationships with other dogs over associations with people. So the studies show that if dogs are not forced into unnatural relationships with people at an early age, they maintain their inherent, which means natural, instincts to have relationships with other dogs instead of people. Let's examine the definition of the word inherent so I can prove that this is exactly what it is saying. The Merriam-Webster Dictionary defines the word inherent as belonging to or being part of the nature of a person or thing. Synonyms for inherent are built in, inborn, innate, native, and natural. So the dog's natural instinct 
is to have relationships with other dogs and not with people. However, because the oppressor forces dogs into these unnatural relationships with people at an early age, that's the reason people have dogs as pets today. The time has come to repent. Put the unclean thing out of your house and be holy as the Most High is holy. Part 2. Dogs are instruments of death. This part of the teaching will demonstrate the vicious and unpredictable nature of these abominable beasts. I genuinely sympathize with persons who have already fallen victim to these instruments of death. The Most High never intended for Israelites to have these creatures inside our homes. They are like ticking time bombs that can explode at any time for no apparent reason. This is their true nature, although the oppressor has tried to breed it out of them. Jeremiah chapter 15 verse 3. Jeremiah chapter 15 verse 3 says, And I will punish them with four kinds of death, saith the Lord. The sword to slay, that's one kind or instrument of death, and the dogs to tear, so dogs are an instrument of death. And the wild beasts of the earth, that's the third instrument of death. And the birds of the sky to devour and destroy. The Most High created the dog with the inherent, inborn, natural instinct to tear things apart. That is why they can attack and kill people or other animals without warning. They are instruments of death. You see it on the news every day about these dogs, okay? You see it on the news every day about a dog. You see it on about kids, okay? Protect your kids. If you love them, you had them, you're going to protect them. Dayton police arrived at the 2200 block of Riverside Drive. That's where witnesses say a little infant boy died. The family dog at that location attacked an eight-month-old child, infant child, and caused the death of that child. They also say the pet was a loving animal and has never done anything like this. Tonight, they are being consoled by close family and friends. So-called family dogs, household pets, or man's best friend can snap at any time and attack even their owners. This is the inherent, inborn, natural instinct of the dog. However, the oppressor tries to breed out this natural instinct to turn dogs into family pets. This is a recipe for disaster. Third Kings chapter 20 in the Brenton Septuagint translation is 1 Kings chapter 21 in the KJV. I will read 3 Kings chapter 20 verses 23 to 24 in the Septuagint. It says, And the Lord spoke of Jezebel saying, The dogs shall devour her. That is what dogs are supposed to do. The dogs are instruments of death. That's why it says, The dogs shall devour her within the fortification of Jezreel. Him that is dead of Achab in the city shall the dogs eat. Dogs would eat anything, including people. That is the unnatural, inherent, inborn instinct. They are scavengers that would eat anything, including their owner, if given the chance. Again, 
Him that is dead of Achab in the city shall the dogs eat, and him that is dead of him in the field shall the birds of the sky eat. Robert Frazier is trying to figure it out. What could have triggered his dog to attack? Attack his wife, Angela Smith. It was so vicious, she died. He says he never saw it coming. I left out the house. I just left out the house for just 15 minutes and I come back. She was dead. Frazier says he got Kane as a puppy eight years ago from a relative. He says the dog was well-trained, well-behaved. The owner tells me he knows pit bulls have a violent reputation, but he's still surprised something like this involving his dogs has now happened. So when it comes to fatal dog attacks, pit bulls were involved in 72% of all incidents. 83% of those pit bull attacks happened inside the home. 42% of the victims were children under the age of six. Because most fatal dog attacks involve the pit bull, some people are quick to claim that it is only certain breeds of dogs that attack and kill people. Therefore, they can feel safe keeping their family dog inside their house because it is not a vicious dog. Let's carefully examine this fallacious claim. On the website of the University of Liverpool, news.liverpool.ac.uk, there is an article entitled, Dog Attacks on Adults Are Rising, But Science Shows It's Wrong to Blame Breeds. It's wrong to blame breeds. That means it's wrong to say that only certain breeds of dogs attack and kill people. Quote 1 says, There is little consistent scientific evidence that some breeds are inherently, there goes that word again, more aggressive than others. Our evaluation suggests that the breeds reported to bite are simply the most popular breeds in that region. So if pit bulls are popular in a particular region, then most reports of dog bites will be by pit bulls. If German shepherds are most popular in a particular region, most reports of dog bites will be by German shepherd. And the same applies to chihuahuas and any other dog you can think of. However, when we examine breeds involved in fatalities, it is clear that most are large and powerful. That's just because the bigger dog can cause more damage. But the smaller dog would do the same thing if it could. That's its inherent instinct. It continues. That's not to say smaller breeds cannot kill. They have been known too. They have been known too. Quote number two says, Kenneth Baker, the Home Secretary responsible for the Dangerous Dogs Act that banned pit bull terriers, admitted in his autobiography that a ban on Rottweilers, Dobermans, and Alsatians would have infuriated the middle classes. So the Home Secretary who was responsible for the Dangerous Dogs Act in the UK, he knew that pit bull terriers are not the only dangerous dogs. But because he was afraid to upset the middle classes, he chose not to ban Rottweilers, Dobermans and Alsatians. All dogs have the potential to attack and kill, regardless of their size. Quote 3 says, Don't fall into the trap of thinking, my dog wouldn't bite anyone. Every day, dogs who have never bitten someone before, do. Now let's consider for a moment how common it is to be bitten by a dog. On Forbes.com, there's an article entitled, Dog Attack Statistics by Breed, 2024. Quote 1 says, Dog bite incidents are not a small 
problem. Again, dog bite incidents are not a small problem. This means it's a big problem. In fact, an estimated 4.5 million people annually, that means every year, sustain a bite from a canine. Every year, four and a half million people are bitten by dogs. Quote 2 says, children are more likely to be the victims of dog attacks for many reasons, including an inability to recognize cues signaling potential aggression in canines, a childish propensity to engage in behaviors that can be triggering to dogs, such as running and squealing, and their smaller size, which makes them less able to survive an attack. So a child can be attacked by a dog just for being a child. The Most High did not intend for Israelites to have these dogs around our families. Our children should be free to be children without us worrying about a dog's natural instinct kicking in and that dog mauling and killing our child. A horrifying dog attack caught on camera in Texas. Shantae Wright Haywood pulling her two-year-old son CJ from the jaws of a stray. The dog running at CJ as they were leaving their home before Shantae scoops him up and spins him away. The dog keeps lunging at the toddler, chasing the pair right up to the front door. Shantae able to shield CJ as the dog jumped up and snapped at him, eventually able to hand him off to his sister waiting inside before escaping into the house herself. But the dog wouldn't let up, breaking the door off the hinges and pushing to get in. It's time to The kids are putting their... Um retrieved by the sheriff and animal control leaving a trail of destruction in his wake at this point someone will say okay okay it is clear that dogs must not live inside our houses but what about cats surely we can have cats listen closely Usually cat bites are a lot worse than dog bites. Their mouths sometimes have worse bacteria, but also they have such sharp teeth, mm -hmm. the cat, so they penetrate farther into your skin. <gasps> wow. No unclean thing should be inside the houses of the holy people of the Most High. Whether it is a dog, a cat, a snake, or a hamster, unclean creatures belong outside, not inside, our homes. In conclusion, despite the lies of the oppressor, dogs are not man's best friend. They are abominable instruments of death that must not live inside our homes. Whether it is their bite, their lick, or some parasite or illness that they carry in or on their abominable bodies. The Most High created them to be instruments of death. Therefore, if you choose to have a dog, it should have its own house instead of living inside your house. And it goes without saying that your dog will not be going to heaven. I pray that my people, the children of Israel, would stop allowing the oppressor to brainwash them into letting dogs lick their faces, eat from their plates, and or sleep in their beds. Repent before you become the next victim of these instruments of death. And with that, I say, Salam.